You're listening to The World Tonight. I'm Sean Lay. I'm making this video because it could be the last video I make. Yeah. <sighs> Pretty soon I'm going to be leaving somehow. And I'm not so sure of the outcome, but I'm 99% positive it will work. And if it doesn't, then this video can help me because all my father cares about is his reputation. That's Latifa, a strange daughter of Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, using a video message posted on the internet in 2018 to explain why she was making her third attempt to leave. She failed after Indian Special Forces boarded her boat as it made for international waters. A judge in London today concluded that the cooperation of the Indian military in that operation to capture Latifa demonstrated Sheikh Mohammed and the UAE's significant international respect and influence. But did the Foreign Office disrupt the police investigation into the kidnapping of another daughter, this time in England, in order to protect Britain's relations with the ruler of Dubai? That question isn't answered by Sir Andrew McFarlane, the most senior judge presiding in family courts in England and Wales. But in what's called a finding of fact, Sir Andrew explained the circumstances which have prompted Princess Haya, Sheikh Mohammed's sixth wife, to challenge her husband's application for contact with their two children. In his judgment, Sir Andrew said she was worried because two of the Sheikh's daughters had disappeared. Shamsa was abducted in Cambridge when she was 19, almost 20 years ago now, and hasn't been seen in public since. An email sent by one of her sisters, but said to be from Shamsa, describes being grabbed by four armed men, driven to her father's home in Newmarket, drugged and flown by helicopter and plane to Dubai. Well, our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, is with me. Frank, you sat in on a lot of the hearing. We're only getting the judgment now because an application by the Sheikh to keep it confidential was rejected by the court. Why was he so keen that these matters shouldn't be made public? Well, soon after the judgment was made public, a statement was issued in his name, in Sheikh Mohammed's name, saying that um, the reason why he'd wanted to keep it secret was that it was not in the best interests of their children. So what we haven't mentioned there is the two underage children uh, of Princess Haya and Sheikh Mohammed, who are currently in Britain. She, when she fled Dubai last year in April, she brought them with her. And he said it's not in their interest and he's called on the notoriously intrusive UK media to leave them alone. And uh, he's he said that, look, you're only getting one side of the judgment because he himself, as a head of state, couldn't appear in court. So he said the judgment is one sided. Now, the court is certainly the the the, the sort of historic um, attitude of the court was not particularly sympathetic to the fact that Sheikh Mohammed was not represented in person because she was there, Princess Haya. She turned up every day. She listened intently to everything that was being said and argued both for and against. Did he, did his side then provide no information to the judge? I mean, oh, no, they says, did. So when he says it's a one-sided judgment, what he's saying is the judge has reached a conclusion that backs her version... And he is not happy about that. He's not saying that the court didn't know what the alternative argument or case was. I think you've absolutely nailed that exactly right. Yes. I mean, um, this is a very high profile case that's been going on for eight months. Absolutely top lawyers, Britain's top barristers have been arguing this case, highly paid for both sides. Um, and very convincing arguments were made on both sides. But in the end, the court, uh, the, the family court and the court of appeal has come down on the side of the princess. Um, now, just for the sake of balance here, let's just, you know, put this in perspective. She, uh, the court heard, um, was told, had an ad began an adulterous affair with her British bodyguard sometime around 2018. Um, she started getting very intimidating signs, signals from agents of the sheikh. Uh, at one point, uh, a, in fact, on two occasions, a gun was placed on her pillow in her room in Dubai with the safety catch off. On another occasion, a helicopter was landed right in front of her dwelling and the pilots said, I'm here to take one person to Awir. Awir is, I've lived in Dubai and I know what Awir is. It's, Awir is where a desert prison is. It's a pretty remote place. Um, and that really frightened her. So she fled in April having already now discovered what she realised was the truth about what had happened to these two abducted princesses. Uh, and interestingly, Sheikh Mohammed doesn't deny that he's brought these princesses back, 
but he says that his version is rather than them being abducted was that they were being they were being rescued and sort of essentially uh, rescued from extortion in one case and just from needing mental help in another. Can I ask you one one final question? How potentially damaging is this for relations between Dubai and Britain? And given that they, there's been question marks raised by uh, the lawyers on the, the, the mother's side of kind of the Foreign Office having some kind of role in encouraging there to be a backing off of police investigations and all the rest of it, uh, damaging but also damaging to our government as well as to Dubai's. The Foreign Office doesn't come out of this with shining colours, that's for sure, because um, Sheikha Shamsa was abducted in broad daylight from Cambridge in August 2000. That is fact. That's established by the court. And Cambridgeshire Police tried to start an investigation into this. They made an application to go to Dubai for a detective to go there, interview her. That was refused by Dubai, and they didn't get any help from the Foreign Office at all on this. Britain has very close relations with the UAE government, including Dubai. There's an airbase there, Minhad, I've been there, David Cameron's been there, RAF, tornadoes, typhoons, and, and supply planes go in and out of there. And of course, the UAE is a major trading partner and partner in terms of anti-corruption. There are customs agents stationed there, and it's an ally against Iran. So, it's not in Britain's strategic interest for there to be a row. Uh, so I think the Foreign Office will be hoping that this whole business goes away and that you and I don't continue this conversation. <laughs> well, at that point, uh, nothing to do with the Foreign Office, Frank Gardner. Thank you very much. But we will stay with this story and the implications of it because Latifa, the daughter you heard speaking in that video she posted on the internet, is represented by Lord David Hay. Having had a grim experience of his own in custody in Dubai, he campaigns now for the rights of foreigners held there. Earlier, he told me about the significance he sees in this judgment. It was over two years ago that we were speaking with Latifa during her escape attempt, and it's two years ago yesterday that the boat that she was on was attacked, um, and then she was taken, and, and she hasn't been seen in public since then. What's the importance of today's judgment in the family court? I mean, the judgment is, is, is very important for lots of reasons, but it, what, what it does do is, is it shines a light on, on some of the questions that you've answered. It, it, it shows us essentially what happened to Latifa, that she's effectively in, you know, for, for want of a better phrase, a prison. And it, it gives us a lot of information of what happened from the last time that we had contact with her up, up until day. But it's, the judgment itself is very important because it validates everything Latifa said about what happened to her and her sister. And of course, her sister Shamza, almost two decades ago, was similarly kidnapped, but this time from the streets of the, the UK by her father. Now that's referred to in the judgment as well. That's a, a very serious accusation. Um, so that's, it, it's very, very important for us. But what, what's equally important for us is that about three weeks ago, Tina, the Latifa's friend and myself, we were at the United Nations in Geneva, um, where we were representing Latifa's case to the United Nations Working Group on Enforced Disappearances. And this judgment is going to be very important for them because they've been investigating Latifa's whereabouts for about two years. And now we can actually give them a judgment and show them that Latifa was kidnapped. And you've had a very senior judge in England conclude that based on a, you know, a very long trial process. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because this is described in legal jargon as a statement of fact Correct. set out by the judge. So in other words, the judge is saying, these are no longer allegations. I am satisfied that these are the circumstances which applied in these cases and therefore that provides the background for for his estranged wife, the Sheikh's estranged wife, to say, look, I don't want my children to have contact with their father because I believe their fate may be the fate of their older half-sisters. Correct. I mean, when you look at it, it's an unprecedented finding. It's a, it's a finding that effectively the ruler of, of an emirate and a very senior member of that country's government essentially kidnapped two of his daughters, one of them from the streets of England, and meted out extensive abuse and intimidation to his, his most recent ex-wife, who was in England. And, and these are findings of fact by the most senior family court judge in England. It's very significant. Which raises the question then whether you will now be pressing for the police to reopen the investigation into what happened in Cambridge almost 20 years ago when the older daughter Shamza disappeared and also uh, presumably questioning why the Foreign Office hasn't been more open about its relations with uh, the Sheikh and whether or not it intervened in this 
police investigatory process? I think you're right. I think the judgments raise so many questions now, particularly, obviously, from the 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 the, the two thousand kidnap of of, of Sheikh Hashamza from the streets of England, which was, for want of a better phrase, essentially covered up by the Foreign Office, and and that's again quite quite heavily detailed all the circumstances around that in the judgment. So that's something that's very, very important. Now, last year, we tried to get the Cambridge Police to reopen the investigation. We took Latifa's video, which lots of people have seen, the transcript to that, which is essentially eyewitness evidence to what happened to her sister. And we also had one of Latifa's cousins, a man named Marcus Asabri, who was also Shamza's cousin, who gave evidence to the Cambridge Police. So we've given them a lot of new evidence. And obviously, this judgment should help them. Just for mm. clear, for the, for the benefit of, of listeners who won't have read this judgment, um, the point is made in it that Cambridge Police investigated and then requested that they should be given permission to travel to Dubai to question witnesses there. And that application was rejected by the Crown Prosecution Service. Is that your understanding of co- what happened? Co- correct. Yeah. Co- correct. With the, with the involvement of the, of, of the Foreign Office, that it was that they were essentially denied that ability to go there and investigate that. Uh, let me ask you, finally, um, having gone through this process over the last couple of years, having also your experience, your personal experience, which obviously we, we don't have time to go into in this interview, but it's well documented, of your mistreatment when you were in Dubai... What's your reflection on Britain's relationship with the Sheikh and, and with his country? Is it something we should be giving serious consideration to possibly changing that relationship? I, I think absolutely. You, you've now got the, the, the most senior family court judge in England concluding that a man who is regularly seen and, and a friend of our Queen, regularly seen at Ascot, kidnapped people, not just from abroad, but kidnap people from the streets of the UK. Now, that shows a country and a leader that doesn't respect our country and our laws. And the question is, is that the type of person that we want to be have as an ally, we want to do business with? Or is that the type of country that we feel safe sending our holiday makers to, our tourists to, our businessmen, businesswomen? I think there needs to be a, a, a root and branch review of our relationship with the UAE in light of this judgment, because it raises many, many extremely serious, essentially, acceptances by the judge of grave acts by the ruler of Dubai. That's David Hay. We did ask the Foreign Office to respond to that interview and to today's judgment. They told us they were not making an on-the-record statement.